Hi all, I have another amazing and instructive game from Leela Chass. So ID 507 against Stockfish 7. This is by David Grosvenor. Leela, I, Leela was on a GTX 160 graphics card, Stockfish 7 on a 2.8 gigahertz 4 CPU setup. So book moves given, we go into the Kara Khan for exploration in this game. These are the book moves given, so the Kara Khan we have knight d7 being played here. Okay, so end the book. Leela plays c3. We have knight g f6, bishop d3. Black takes on e4 and then plays knight f6. The bishop drops back. Bishop g4 trying to keep the bishop outside of the pawn chain before locking in. This would look like a very sad bishop. So with tempo hitting the queen here, knight e2 is played with an option to stretch out the pawns. And you might think this this could be double edged actually moving a lot of pawns to hit that bishop. Actually, it's something I've done recently in one of my recent over the board games earlier this year to play like this with F3 in mind. And my opponent was surprised uh, with this because not many people dare to play like this with, with the pawn avalanche. Uh, so knight F3 is probably more standard. So knight E2, we have E6. And Lisa does dare to gain some tempo on the bishop to drive it to maybe where it wants to be. So h4 actually is played here. We have bishop d6. g4, so this is very aggressive pawn play so far. And I find actually this whole game, there's some beautiful pawn play from white. Uh, in particular, there's a big danger here in this position. Well, if white castles kingside, this vacuum of weaknesses uh, exists and that might be exploitable in some way. Uh, but also to note here is, well, black played h6 here. To note, if white castles queenside, sometimes it's not a good idea to play c4, especially in advance of black not having played b5. Sometimes black can pounce with b5. Now, Leela is very cautious in this game. You'll see that these pawns, in particular c and d, are instrumental. It's absolutely wonderful if you can keep track of the c and d pawns throughout this game pay attention to them and where are they blockaded so you know c and e e6 pawns c6 and e6 might uh, dissolve the duo but the duo in this game watch how it's kept intact uh black so h6 if black castled here uh, i think h6 this this line gives uh an even position actually. White would have to be quite careful about committing to h6. Maybe g5 keeps more tension and with the possibility of g6 this might actually be a better way of playing things. For example this is just an example line where white could end up with a small edge with prospects like h6. That might be the more dangerous way of playing things rather than uh, closing up things with h6 as you might expect um, if black castled. But black was wary about the possibilities and tried to clamp down on things with h6. Uh, we have bishop d2, so preparing to castle queenside a5. Now here is where I say I, th I think this pawn plays masterful because quite often against Karakhans when I'm casting queenside I'm also tempted to play c4 rather routinely, perhaps too routinely. And sometimes black can just play an energetic b5 now in this situation, white castled queenside, leader castled queenside. On c4, you'll see that if we think about the, the, these two pawns as a duo, which could be very dangerous connected past pawns later, later, that could actually set the whole theme uh, and strategy for the game. If we play c4 here, b5 is energetic, even in this position, with the black king in the center. For example, this kind of thing, the duo's lost, so the soul's lost, lost from the game. It's become a much more tactical game uh, where, okay, white might, might have an edge, but it's much more tactical. It's not about connected past pawns. Uh, but anyway, okay, so let's go back. So bishop d2, a5, white castles queen side, and black plays b5. So white's basically lost the chance to play c4, but that doesn't matter. It seems king b1, queen c7, rook hg1, and black plays aggressively a4. But this is really nice now. 
as I say, the whole template of the game can, can actually be understood from these two pawns. Uh, for these two pawns to, to be connected past pawns, you'd really want to knock out this one. To knock out this one, you wouldn't want to <laughs> undermine this one. Uh, so undermining f7 to take this out of the way would leave a running d pawn freer without this being dissolved. So bear that pawn player in mind for this f4 with the prospect of g5, g6 to undermine f7 to be able to take or target e6. Knight d5. Okay, it looks like an aggressive knight for the moment. Rook f1. a3. b3. We have rook a7. Queen d3. Queen d7. Queen f3. Putting some pressure subtly on, on d5. Rook b7. And now g5 with the prospect of g6. Also, queen f3 was holding h5 now for this g5, not to lose the h pawn. So g6 is is on the way here, king d8, knight g3, bit of preparation, king c8, knight e4, knight e7. It's no big deal to take the bishop here. Black would have a very nice f5 blockade square. Leader played rook e1. If instead knight takes d6 check, queen takes this position, you can see that black can actually make use of b4 as well to undermine d4. For example, like this, b4, and this should be an even position at least for black. So no problems there. So we have rookie one keeping that tension, not wanting to get rid of that beautifully centralized knight at the moment, just keeping it on the board. And then we have b4, which is kind of playing into white's hands. If you look at this pawn duo, they're starting to, to celebrate already that the b pawn is not going to dissolve the c pawn and or have, have to open the b file to white's king. Now these two pawns just need this guy to go away and this guy to go away or be removed and we'll have two beautiful connected past pawns. So how is that actually achievable? Let's have a look at what happens. Knight f5, bishop e3, rook d8, rook d1, we have king b8. There's no point black taking on e3 here. Uh, that would lose that blockading, that quite nice blockading knight. To take is a mistake as, as GM on YouTube says, um, one of the GMs on YouTube. So here, for example, Black hasn't achieved much. G6 is going to happen. And then maybe F5. And look at the pawn potential here is increased, taking out E6. We see that the pawn potential is increased. And this is a really nice position for white with a uh, great pawn play available. So we have King B8. So not taking on E3. Bishop F2, Queen C7. Rook G, E1. So here, uh, it, it does look as though f4, well, why not take on f4? Uh, but that was decided uh, against. Uh, there's things like knight c5, for example, which look very, very dangerous. And then g6 would undermine e6. So with knight takes e6. So if we look at this, for example, knight c5 hitting b7, and then g6, it looks nasty for e6, and a fork on e6. So black dead, did not dare take on f4. We have rook c8, g6 now. So the bishop standing guard really of c5 here against knight c5. fg, hg. So this pawn is now more vulnerable and shaky. If that's removed, as, as I say, these two, these two pawn, this pawn duo is going to celebrate even further. Rook d8, knight g3. Trying to get this pawn out of the way and targeting it as well. Already, this position is strong in any case. Even d5, which is against the principle of the pawn duo not being dissolved, even this partial de dissolving uh, of the duo is a very nice position for white, it has to be said. Big advantage. But uh, this is a nice move as well. So, hitting e6 as well. Queen d7. Now just getting rid of that e6 pawn, and this is why I think this game is really soulful, because you can see that this plan to undermine f6, to get rid of e6 out of the way, is making this d pawn celebrate a bit further with its little partner in crime, the c pawn here. This pawn duo is getting even more excited. And in fact, the d pawn takes a step forward, knowing that if black dare take on d5, there's going to be a nasty pin. This is a very nasty pin. For example, this didn't happen. You know, this is another, another two-way pin, and this is just building up the pressure. And Bishop H4 will break the camel's 
back here the final straw breaking the back of it's absolutely crushing uh, if the rook moves then there's things like c5 with d7 hanging you know c5 for example um, or just taking on d6 even just um, now the variation I'd actually calculate let's go through that actually why, why not just taking on d6 in advance yeah so taking on d6 fine there's no there's no killer check here or anything uh, and this is also check in any case um, uh, yeah I think it was sufficient just to play King c2 uh, to a check so this is just the bishop up for white so basically uh, we have now the pawns celebrating even further C and D pawns are even happier now because all that's needed really is to eliminate the C pawn and then we've got two massive connected past pawns now we have rook e6 rook f8 and now you might think is this just control of the file as Nimzovich said control of the file often the value of controlling a file is the lateral pressure you can get the lateral side effects you can get and here the spirit of the position is these two pawns really want to celebrate a bit harder to, to become a real powerful formidable connected pass pawn force in the position so the lateral pressure from this controlling the, the file is evident so what can we do with it in this position I might have given you a few clues so five seconds to pause the video what would you play here think about visually crushing things connected past pawns the C and D pawns wanting to accelerate further so what move could you come up with five seconds okay rook takes d6 believe it or not this bishop was protecting c5 as well look we've got bishop here hitting c5 now but just before we go into that if black had played to get away from the the pin of queen e5 which is about to happen say black had played uh here king a8 it wouldn't matter there's a strong move in bishop h4 for example like this and then the queen is hitting okay not yet because of e1 but if we look at this there's also rook a6 check check and it, there's a lot of pressure on black in this position white has a big advantage so okay so we have this move queen e7 which allowed rook takes and then the big point is this queen e5 so that taking out that bishop has undermined the c5 pawn which also of course weakens these guys this is a really crushing position the c and d pawns are, are about to open a bottle of champagne here uh, we have queen takes e5 in this position if rook d8 then bishop takes c5 this is just massive this position we'd have actually three connected past pawns massive advantage uh, but we're going to get there anyway even with this because the c pawns hanging and there's no meaningful way of protecting it black played king c7 which uh, if rook c8 e6 and then we've got d6 on the way so it's like this is absolutely crushing murderous position in fact here <laughs> we can either win material or just go for getting rid of this one of these guys with rookie five with a massive advantage keep the suspense win even more material first then come back to push through so anyway King c7 this is gigantic now not only the C and D pawns are celebrating there's another pawn which has joined as, as their trio in crime now this f pawn is now joined to, to create three connected past pawns in the center gigantic massive central past pawns now three of them black's h pawn is no match for these three connected past pawns in the center the champagne bottle has not just opened there's an extra bottle that's been opened because of the joining of the f pawn to make a trio three musketeers in the center c7 crushing the damage is too much from these past pawns absolutely too much a5 king b7 d7 okay game ended here it could continue e7 of course and then queening now for me this has great themes uh 
when you're white against the Karakhan and you castle queenside, sometimes you're tempted to play c4, but often the reaction b5 either grabs the d5 square or other horrible stuff happens. Here, Leela managed to keep these pawns safe, the king safe, closed b fold all the time, undermining f7 to undermine e6 for the d pawn to start celebrating, undermining d6 for the c pawn to, to celebrate as well. The f pawn jo joining forces, three gigantic connected past pawns. This game creates a massive soulful impression of pawn play to me. I hope it does for you as well. And you might want to review it and look at look at the, the story of those pawns unfolding again and again. It's very instructive, I, I feel. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.